Hi. Now, in this last part of the question, we're told that a second particle Q moves with a constant velocity of minus 2i plus cj meters per second. And when t equals naught, the position vector of Q is 11i plus 2j meters. The particles P and Q collide at the point with position vector di plus 14j meters. And what we've got to do is find the value of c and the value of d. So, how do we go about a problem like this? Well, essentially, we know that if they meet, then the position vectors of P and Q must be equal. But what we need to get, first of all, is the position vector of Q at any time t. And we do that similar to what we did in the previous part. That is, that the position vector of Q, which I'm going to call RQ, is equal to the integral of the velocity vector with respect to time. And that means that we need to integrate the velocity vector, which is minus 2i plus cj. So minus 2i plus cj. And we integrate that with respect to time. And if we integrate that, we're going to get for the first component minus 2ti. And then for the second component here, it'll be plus c t in the j direction. And there'll also be a constant of integration, which I'll call plus c. Now to get that constant of integration, we know that when t equals naught, the ve position vector of q is at 11i plus 2j. So when t equals 0, we've got that r equals 11i plus 2j. Now all we need to do is substitute this into this equation here. So if I call that 1 and we sub this into 1, sub in 1, then what we have got is 11i plus 2j must equal, well, if t equals 0, this component is 0, this component is 0, it just leaves us with the constant c. So that means that if we substitute this back into 1, then what we have got is therefore the position vector of q, rq, is going to equal minus 2t plus 11 in the i direction. I'll write that as 11 minus 2t in the i direction. And then we've got, for the j components, we've got ct and then plus 2. So we'll write that as plus ct plus 2 in the j direction. Now what we know is that when P and Q collide, let's just put this in, when P and Q collide, then the position vector of P, RP, must equal the position vector of Q. And in the previous part, we found out what the position vector of P was. Let's just put it in here, where the position vector of P, well that was given by 2t squared minus 5t plus 2 in the i direction. And for the j component, it was plus 3t plus 5. All right. Now I can see that RP must equal RQ, but at the point where they meet, this is going to equal di plus 14j. Let's just put it in here, di plus 14j. So our components must be equal to one another. ct plus 2 for the j component here must equal the 14. But I'm not going to get very far there because I've got two unknowns. But if I look at this j component for the position vector of p, 3t plus 5, I can see that that too must be equal to 14. And with one unknown t, I can find t. 
So that's where we start here. If we equate these two components, we therefore have that 3t plus 5 must equal 14. And so if I subtract 5 from both sides, I'm left with 3t equals 9. Divide through by 3 and we find that t equals 3. So that's the time when p and q intersect. So all I need to do now is substitute this up into this component for rq and it will allow me to work out what c is. So I know that that's going to come to the 14 as well. So we can say that therefore, if I substitute this into here, we're going to have c times 3 or 3c plus 2 must equal 14. Take 2 from both sides and you get 3c equals 12. Divide by 3 and you end up with c equaling 4. So there's one value for c and we now move on to try and find out what d is. And to do that all I've got to do is say that when t equals 3 just simply substitute it say into here because this will be equal to the d part. I could even substitute t equals 3 into this part and it would still give me the value of d. But I'm going to do it with this one. It seems easier. So when t equals 3, we've got that 11 minus 2 times 3, which is 6, okay, from this part, must equal d. So from this, 11 takes 6 is 5, so therefore d equals 5. So we've got our two values then. In part 1, we had to find the value of c, so c equals 4. And in part 2, we had to find the value of d, and so d equals 5. All right.